In this video, we're going to talk about switch statements, what they are and how you can use them, like I'm using them here on my project, to switch through the different attack types. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Well, I'm not going to show you how to do all the attack types, but I am going to show you how the switch statement works. Okay, don't forget to follow me on x, x.com slash wizardy. Give me a comment on there and I'll follow you back. Okay, so within our project, that object you were just seeing attacking everything was called object player. And I have a switch statement right here. And basically what I'm saying is if I click the left mouse button, then it's going to run the switch statement and it's going to check what my attack type is. So it's checking what the value of this variable is. And then, okay, if that value returns, my cat is really getting into something right now. If the value of whatever's in here is equal to arrow, which this is a string here, then it's going to run the arrow script that I made and, and everything in here before break. If it's a fireball, it's going to run all this. If it's a soul pul pulse, if I can speak right without a freaking accent, <laughs> it's going to run all this and so on and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to open up our object switch that I made here, and I have a create event. And we're going to first create a variable. I'm just, I mean, it can be anything, but we're going to name it, um, uh, let's name it options. Sure, whatever. I don't know. As always, these tutorials are pretty impromptu. Then we're going to write out a switch. And within those parentheses, we're going to put our variable that we made called options. And this accepts all data types. This could be kind of like I had it over there. It could be a, it could be a string, right? It could be numbers. Um, it could be a lot of things. So, but in our case, we're going to use numbers. So switch, and then we're going to use curly braces. And we're going to use something called case. And then we put in the different possibilities that this variable can be. So let's say case zero, we're going to show message. Um, this is the number zero, right? Obviously, you wouldn't use it for showing messages like this. Much easier way, but just to, uh, just to give an example. Okay, so you, you do case like that. You know, use these indents. That's pretty good. And then, of course, you want to, um, you want to break it at the end of each case. So we're going to add more here. Case one, it's going to, um, you know, show message, what's up, break. And then you could just, you know, obviously add as many cases as you want here. If we do this, how about we'll just say, you know, the game will end. It'll just shut the game down. Okay. So again, make sure all of this with it is within the curly braces. And so obviously options equals zero. When we run the game, it's going to show us that first message there. This is number zero, okay? If we change this to two, um, let's, you know, you can add as much code as you want. So we could say the game is over, run the game. It's going to show the message and then close down the game. Um, that's essentially <clears throat> all there is to it. There's, you know, you can think of different use cases for this. In, in, in like what I was doing here is cycling through different attack types, which is very useful. Instead of, oh, if mouse uh, button being pressed is the left button, and then if this variable right here is equal to arrow, then do all this, and then if it's equal to this, then do all this. No, I'm just going to use a switch statement. And then with each case, I'm going to run the code. So you can think of a switch almost like a bunch of if statements within if statements. So, um, you know, it would be no different than saying, if options equals zero, then, um, you know, run this code here. And just do it this way to save some time here. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, and then if it equals one, then, you know, do, do, do this one or whatever. So, there we go. So, I, okay, so you're getting what I'm saying here. It, it's, it's a lot more efficient than using a bunch of if statements. Because if you're going to cycle through a bunch of things with the same variable, it just makes more sense to use a switch and then to just write out your code in each of the cases. There's also case default. So I'm going to put that one up. And we're going to say that's going to, that's actually, no, no, I don't even think you put a, you don't, you don't even put a case there. You just put like default. I don't really use this much because I don't normally have to. Um, let me say, hi. So if, let's say, options, let's delete all that, is equal to, like, minus 1, so it's none of these other cases, let's run the game. It should still show high, yeah. 
So um, that's another thing you could use within a switch statement is default. So if it doesn't if it doesn't equal to any of the cases, it'll just run this default code. And that's really about all there is to it. And there's a lot of use cases here. Um, so I'm going to delete all of this in the create event. I'm going to create a step event. And I'm just going to paste out some code here. And I'm going to make it a little smaller. Hopefully you can see that okay. So now we're doing switch keyboard key. This is a basically a, a variable built into GameMaker that's going to detect what key that is being pressed. And um, I, if no key is being pressed, it shouldn't run anything. And then it has the different cases, VK left. So if I click the left arrow key, VK right, right arrow key. Um, and then you can nest cases together like this. So if I'm clicking left or if I'm clicking the A key on my keyboard, okay, then X minus equal four. In other words, move my sprite to the left four pixels. So you can see you can nest these together like that. This is called nesting where you kind of put two side by side to run the same type of code. So this is useful with like movement, case VK right, or if I'm clicking D, kind of same thing. So just kind of look at this format here and just understand that you can do this too. And um, I kind of like to put the brakes over here. I could be wrong on that. Someone's going to yell at me. But <clears throat> anyway, there, there's, there, you know, syntax obviously doesn't matter. You could have it like this and it would still run fine. But it could be neat and orderly or I'm going to get yelled at in the comments. Okay, but notice on breaks, um, you know, this is kind of where your code's going to end, and you're going to end that in the semicolon. Do not end that in the colon. Start the cases with a colon, but don't end the breaks in a colon, okay? So the cases end on a colon, like that, like so. Breaks, semicolon. Actually, you know, you need the semicolon. Semicolons in GameMaker don't matter that much. Depends on how you compile it. Um, it's just good programming etiquette but you can see right here case zero colon break semicolon okay so let me pause the video real quick i'm going to add a sprite to this and then we'll we'll run this piece of code all righty so here we go we are moving around and this is all from that switch code that i showed you in the step event and this is all running off a of switch statement and i'm using the arrow keys now i'm using wasd and you can use both of them. I have my right hand on the arrow keys, left hand on the WASD, and everything works good. Only thing is you can't go diagonally. So that's something to consider. <clears throat> um, well, that's basically all there is to it. Um, don't forget you can always right-click in the code window here. You can go to Code Snippets, and you can click Switch, and that will write out an example of a switch statement for you. So always keep that in mind if you forget how exactly to uh, to make it work. And then of course you just put your variable here and you put your different cases here. So um, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.